Glad to have our next guest along with us. Take notes. We're going to learn about leadership lessons from the Hanoi Hilton from the author of that same book. Yeah, I want to say uh, good morning to Colonel Lee Ellis as he joins us here from his uh, home and coming. I'm guessing that's where he is today, but he's got a new book out called Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton. And Lee, first of all, thanks for your service. Second of all, this is a really great looking book. Tell us about the uh, the jacket here because, Bill, I don't know if you've seen it or not, but uh, that, that's very impressive. Well, the guys who did the cover really, I think, were very creative. They It shows two feet. They're real feet. Uh, the right foot has... Uh, it's, it looks like it's someone who's been a prisoner of war and just been captured and run through the brambles and the bushes because it's scratched up and cut up. And uh, actually, originally, it had a little blood on it. We had them uh, Photoshop a little bit of that blood out. It was just a little too much. But it shows the stress, the hardship, the sacrifice, the difficulty that we all go through in life, and particularly the POWs. And then the left shoe is a nice uh, black dress man's shoe uh, like you would wear with a suit. In fact, it is with a suit, so you can see the two feet, one of them uh, very different from the other. I think it really does depict uh, the fact that uh, leadership, leading with honor, is not easy, requires sacrifice. Uh, It also picks up on the sacrifice and the difficulties of being a prisoner of war. Tell us a little bit. Uh, that's that. Tell us a little bit about what inspired you to write this book. Well, over the years, when I've been speaking, people have asked me, "Do I have a book that tells a story?" And I say, "No, but someday." So, as I got around to doing that book, uh, I decided it really shouldn't be a biography because I'm really not a hero. And there were so many people in the camps with us that were. I felt like I was the junior ranking guy, the youngest guy in the camp usually. And I felt like telling the story in general and more of the leadership stories would be more appropriate. Also, I've been a a leadership consultant and coach for about 15 years, so it seemed to fit in that what we really need to capture was an understanding of the story, but more importantly, what are the leadership lessons and the life lessons, really, that we can learn from that experience. And I think our culture really needs that today. Well, let's back up a little bit, though. But in 1967, that's when you were shot down and taken prisoner. Is that correct? That is correct, and uh, in fact, I was just uh, looking at some slides and old pictures this morning. Uh, I got up early and was going through from 1967 when I was a young uh, 23-year-old flying out of Da Nang in Vietnam, and then also some for March of 1973. March the 14th was my release date, and then I actually came back to Commerce, Georgia, which is kind of my hometown, uh, March the 28th of 1973 so it's been a long time now well it really has and vivid memory still for you though yes they are uh probably most of the time i've been a very busy guy i've kind of been a workaholic trying to catch up and keep up i was six years behind as a pow and then got promoted a couple years early to major so i was uh, eight years behind my peers for many years in the air force so i had to work pretty hard uh And I've always just kind of been a hard worker ever since the war, trying to catch up on what I missed out on, I guess. So uh, I didn't think about it that much. I just moved ahead and continued to look forward. But writing the book did cause me to reflect and made it a lot more real, I guess, in my mind that that actually happened to me. And there were parts that I'd never grieved, that I had to grieve going through that book. It was a much harder book to write Mm. than I thought. I was going to ask, was the process for you a difficult process, being all the things it brought up, but also just putting them, those lessons down uh, on paper in, in an organized fashion. Yeah, it was. I've written two other books before, and uh, this one was much more difficult. It took me a lot longer because it was one more complex. We were telling stories and then uh, drawing lessons, and then there was a coaching page. There's a coaching page in each chapter also. So it was more complex, but also the emotional quotient there was pretty high in that I had to go back and relive and think through uh, you know, who I was in that situation and where I'd been and what I'd done and what others had done. And uh, as much as for anything else, I think just uh, uh, realizing the pain and uh, the loss that we all suffered, not just uh, for the POWs, but I think all of the veterans. And, and I think that's where my my heart was really uh, with the veterans as I wrote this book because they didn't get the uh, good treatment when they came home that we did. And, there, you know, there's so many heroes, so many uh, guys who sacrificed so much, so many families who sacrificed so much that really were never recognized. And so, in a way, this book is kind of a tribute to them, too. You know, and I think Lee also, uh, we're talking about Lee Ellis, by the way, uh, Leading with Honor is the book, Leadership Lessons from Hanoi Hilton. 
I was uh, in the seventh grade in 1973 when uh, Ben Purcell came home mm-hmm. to Clarksville. And I remember being part of the junior high band and part of that parade. And I must say, I just want to say thanks to those people who, you know, my, from my parents uh, to the community as a whole, it was very supportive of Vietnam veterans and POWs. Uh, what about mm-hmm. you when you came home? Was there... The, was there the welcome? Did you feel that? Uh, were, were there other places across the country you didn't feel that? How did it sort out for you? Well, the POWs, I think, because it was the ending of the war, and our return signified the end of the war, I think everybody kind of came together about the POWs coming home in a way that they hadn't with the rest of the Vietnam veterans. So we got a very good reception everywhere we went. <coughs> but, uh, you know, that wasn't true of most veterans, unfortunately. Mm, yeah. But we did. And uh, you mentioned Ben Purcell. Uh, ben is one of the heroes in the book. Uh, I tell a story in Chapter 12. I talk about exploiting creativity, and he was certainly a creative guy because he figured out how to escape twice. Yeah, that, 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 hey, that's a great point, and I've heard some of those stories before. I'm looking at Chapter 5, Fight to Win, and there is an illustration of the ropes or pretzel torture. And uh, we probably won't go into all of that here on the air this morning, but uh, it's excruciating types of torture that you went through that I'm not sure all of us have been familiar with. I know I'm not, and this is going to be an eye-opener for me. Yeah. Well, that particular torture, we call it the ropes of the pretzel, and they tied your elbows together till they touched. Your wrists were tied, and then uh, your ankles were tied, and then they, your arms are behind your back tied with your elbows touching. And then they would just lift your arms up over your head, and of course it forced your head down between your legs, and um, but the tearing of the muscles and ligaments and everything in the shoulders and arms uh, was ex- excruciating. I personally didn't go through this. Probably about 60% of the POWs did. Uh, that was one advantage of being the youngest and junior guy in the camp. Sometimes they went through everybody else and ran out of energy before they got to me. Also, uh, it was two weeks before I got to an English speaker when I was captured. So. It, uh, but a lot of the guys did, and it was uh, nobody was able to withstand that torture uh, indefinitely. Sooner or later, you had to break and you had to do something. So I had my own version uh, of more of the humane torture, we called it. But uh, it was uh, it was just uh, you know it's just part of being there that uh, sooner or later they were going to break you one way or the other with one torture or another, and then you had to figure out how can I stay in this battle and do the honorable thing and not cooperate with them, not give them what they want, even though I've got to give in. And so that became kind of the mental challenge and the mental game, and that's where we always ended up trying to figure out how to how to uh, be broken but not really broken and bounce back in so that we were in the fight and denying them what they wanted. Lee, I understand that uh, the book is not available just yet except for signings, and you've got one of those coming up this week. Yes, uh, tomorrow uh, the folks over at Peach State Bank are hosting in their community room upstairs on the third floor uh, a book signing from 2 to 5. And I will be there with uh, plenty of books and ready to uh, uh, sell them, sign them, and uh, visit with folks as they come through. And I do look forward to that. Well, that's going to be a a great visit. And it's forwarded by Senator John McCain, another PLW. Lee Ellis, the book is called Leading with Honor, Leadership Lessons from the Hanoi Hilton uh, again, thanks for dropping the copy by. And I guess, Bill, you're not going to share this because neither one, either one of us, we can't wait to dive into you'll have this. To, you'll have to go. You'll go you've got it. You go first. I'll get it when you get done. All right. But, uh, Lee, thank you very much for your service to our country and how you served our country uh, upon your return as well. And uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Pete State Bank, downtown Gainesville, as you'll be signing the book. Thank you again for being with us here on The Morning Show. Thank you, Bill and Joel. And thank you for your service to our community. I've been listening to you for more than 20 years. Well, wow. you, uh, we do it now. We're honored. honored. We really, really are. are. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, guys.